I do have a recording that took about 45 minutes of you telling the story of how vigils are different now versus how they used to be. Is that from 40th? Nope, that was from Namron Belting. Ah, well, I knew there was an event where he, he disappeared to do that, but I didn't remember. Yeah, well, Daniel Shadow. Did you have a vigil? Did you have a vigil, Alessandra? I had my vigil right when it was becoming, a, it was a new thing. thing. And because more because Laurels and Falcons didn't do vigils back when was, I got mine. It was more common for nights than it was for anything else. And it was right when it was brand new to get anybody from the other orders to speak for you. Mm -hmm. and they didn't tell me I was becoming a peer until they called me up for it. Kenner, yeah, yeah right. Kenner can yell at me and ask. He was totally shocked and surprised. Well, they, um, Except I made him shave. He knew something was up because I made him shave. Well, I made <laughs> this, this had to my knowledge, had never been done. I just thought that it was the thing to do. So I got some purple and gold brocade and I made little pouches of spices and I made hand-dipped purple beeswax candles. Because that's- I, I still have the candles. Yeah, and I and I had those for everybody who came by to and offer- And you had your quest, you had your- out. And You then had your reliquary. Ricardo spoke for me as my knight and I gave him a lion medallion that was Osage orange inlaid with ebony, an ebony star, with a carved mm -hmm. ivory lion, with a uh, paduke claws and tongue, and I oh, dropped him too well with my pelican, and I gave him a little carved mus ivory mustache comb, and I sent a herald around with a tabard of my arms to present these, and I have tapes, because it was too dark, they were videoing, but you can hear of the presentation to them for those, because I wouldn't do my own. I'm I'm standing vigil, but I did all this, and Kinnerk has yelled at me for for doing that because apparently I set a bar, and people felt like they, it is. I don't know how much that's true, but it was not the the norm when I I stepped up. And Ricardo's medallion, after he passed away, his lady Aislin kept it for a while, and then didn't she presented it to the kingdom? I think some years ago, and it became a big thing. And some uh, some friend of Ivar's who does professional movie modeling did a cast of it and made some casts of it and they gave me one. Um, but it's still around, it gets handed around. And I was, I fussed at him for not letting me replace the missing claws because I still have that, I have the original ebony, the original in my garage, the same wood. I could have made the claws. They were like, no, we like it the way it is. And I'm like, it's damaged. But yeah, they didn't listen. I would love to see a picture of that. Okay. I think just, there is just one. It and a site. side that nobody else here has any idea of. But now Duchess Leah. Yeah. First lady of Amsteor to be a queen ever. Later on, when she got her AOA at Twelfth Night in the Steps, uh, being as she had been raised to the status of being a lady, a lady. she presented gifts to everybody at, in the hall. Whoa. She had a, you know, <laughs> you know, we used to do grand gestures. These were Otten days, I think, yeah. right? Okay, so... so well, this was before the name on Steora even came up. So inadvertently, I did something similar at the event in which I received my award of arms, I gave a piece of chocolate. I made bars of chocolate confections. And I gave one piece to every single person on the list field, or around the list field, at the event where I received my award of arms. Your impulse has a it's long correct. history. Yes. And it is correct. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was kind of, that was a fun castellan. I showed up with something like 80 pieces of hand uh, of molded Celtic knotwork shaped Ooh, chocolates. That cool. Um, yeah. And everybody got one, every single person. I had a lot of fun doing that. It is uh, getting on towards yeah, late. Yeah, we to go eat pretty soon. Yeah, I, I didn't want you to, to be starving. Um, I also wanted to check to see if people had responded to my post about that silk. Um, I'm, uh, I found some really beautiful embroidered silk. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. 
and I'm hoping that people will come up with cool projects to do with it. I can't think of anything to do with it, but I will try and find your post so I can show him. Stop licking me. Okay, oh, I was not in the window for I just- to tell you this story because this is not a brave thing at all, but it is hilarious. Okay. I had a miniature long-haired dachshund when I and he first got together. And we, I took her to events with me. She was an awesome event dog. She'd been with me for a really long time. Her name was Liesl. And Jan and I went to, I think it was a Namron Protectorate. And the only reason we could do it, because it's a long drive from San Antonio, is they promised us they would have a tent set up. All we had to do was show up and be there and sure enough that was great that was the only because we would roll in so late we could just go to bed and it was freezing it was absolutely freezing it was a kind of cold where you're like maybe I'll just stay here and wet the bed cold you know so you don't want to uh, so Liesl was awesome in this respect because you could just take this little dachshund and stuff her anywhere and she would sleep there she was like a, a portable little bed warmer and between her and Jan I was all cozy and warm but Liesl, like many dogs, had an issue. Um, she had the little anal gland things and she would sometime, and it didn't smell great. And she would, she would lick them and express them and it was gross. And somewhere around six in the morning, when Liesl has moved down, to like down by our feet, I could feel her and she was, and I'm like, oh my God, the whole tent is gonna smell like that. So I forgot a number of things. These are the things that I forgot. I forgot that I was in a tent that has very thin cloth walls that people can basically hear you sneeze through. Mm -hmm. I forgot that the tent was right in the middle of a very populous encampment. The people all around. It wasn't off in the distance. It was right there. And I forgot that a bunch of those people were already up. I also forgot that I was camping in a tent with my, at the time, boyfriend. And not by myself as I usually had been in the past. Forgetting all of these relevant, relevant things, I lifted my voice and yelled at this dog, don't lick that, that's gross. <laughs> and then realized what that probably sounded like to the hand, more than a handful of people who heard it immediately outside our tent. Giggles were heard. I considered digging my way out. That was, that was I th actually I think coming out of the tent after I did that was a brave act. <laughs> uh, you just have to realize word fame is word fame. That's true. That is true. That kind of word fame would accrue to Jan, though. So. <laughs> no, that was hilariously embarrassing. I was appalling. And he just lost it. He went into a fit of the giggles. I don't think he could move. It was, I've never seen anybody laugh like that. <laughs>